Welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. We recently made a dental key and I asked you fine folks what medical instruments you wanted me to make and uh, what is wrong with you? You wanted me to make a torture device. So that's exactly what we're doing. We'll be making the pair of anguish, which is a mechanical pair that opens up with a screw so it can be inserted in somebody's mouth and opened up to stop them from talking or cause irreparable harm. But on the topic of mechanical things, let's thank today's sponsor, Mecarina. And the Mecarina is great because it's a casual and very enjoyable mobile shooter where you're operating this awesome robot that's called a mech. You go around shooting other mechs. And if you've got five minutes and you want to blow off some steam, you're going to love it. What's unique about Mecarina is you are always playing a against somebody else. So the feeling of excitement is always there and there are countless mechs and skins to collect. Speaking of which, check this out. Mech Arena has made us our very own skin. There is called the Steel Lancer. It's got the raw steel look to it. It's got some orange, which is very on brand considering the whole fire thing. And we got to play it and it was lots of fun. Oh, the Steel Lancer is off. Let's go smoke some mechs. Yes! Ah! No, no, no! Oh, no! Nalskada got me. Whoa! Got him. This month, there's loads of events happening in game where you can win crazy prizes, and they've just launched two new maps to explore, along with its first ever battle pass. It's completely free to play on Android and iOS right now, and if you use my link down below, you can get the exclusive Steel Lancer skin, and you'll get 350 A coins and 50,000 credits to kickstart your progress. All you have to do is install the game, unlock Lancer, and have an exclusive skin that only my subscribers are gonna get. So thank you so much, Mecarina. Check them out down below. Let's get back to the video. Having a look at some historical examples, I've got my sketch sorted out, I don't know what's going to happen. We need a threaded bar that comes down to this little carrier. I'm going to have a bunch of levers on there so that as that threaded bar retracts, the pear expands. Oh, it's going to be awful. For now, we shall cut our pear leaves. So now I'm going to put a 90 degree bend in the end of these leaves so that we can upset it and put a hole in there. So using one of the world's finest engineering devices, second only to duct tape, we've done a rough assembly here. But you see, we do need to adjust our bend. It's looking quite nice up here, but down at the bottom, these tips are just hanging too far apart. We've got to close them up, get them a little closer to touching, just like the drawing. While these cool down, we're going to work on our carrier and nut. I'm going to call this the carrier and this the nut. In a zoomed in view, it looks like this and I think they can be just about identical. The carrier pushes the arms out and the nut is threaded. And our pear is filled with less despair. So these pear leaves will need to be fastened onto this nut. I've got a four millimeter slot all the way around, ready to accept four pear leaves. But as you can see, they are not gonna fit in, so we need to grind and file down a little bit of a tenon in the pear leaves before we drill their respective holes. So we've got our holes drilled all the way around, but with four different pieces, slots that may be off by kind of 0.1 or 0.2 of a millimeter, and these hand-filed pieces, 
It's going to be very important that we start to number them and we fit them to only one specific slot at a time. So I'm going to take a burr and I'm just going to do dots. So dot one to slot one. So now with the holes in the nut as a guide, I'm going to try and drill through the tenon pieces and the leaves without ending up with a 1.6 millimeter drill bit through a finger. Ah, that's a problem. Snap the bit. Now I've got the carbide burr going to hopefully drill out this drill bit. It's quite difficult because the drill bit's made of high speed steel. The surrounding metal is mild steel. So this just slips off and gets sent into the soft steel. Come on. Come on, little fella. Yes! Yes! We've done it. Let's have ourselves a little test fit. Fortunately, for the first time ever, it's gone pear-shaped. Next up, we're gonna create the arms for our carriage. dry assembly of two of the four arms, two of the four leaves. In order that, we work out how long we cut the arms, where we drill the holes, and also because I need a way for the arms to attach and pivot inside the leaves. So we're gonna have to make some sort of little bracket in there. We've got a lot of work to do. So I'm very happy with the little brackets that we've made and also with my first little test rivet. I think a 1.6 millimeter rivet will be the smallest rivet I have ever done. And this whole thing, this entire ridiculous contraption is going to have to be purely assembled with rivets. What I have found out is that by locking a little bit of this wire, which also happens to be TIG welding wire, in the vise and gingerly hammering atop it, we can make one side of the rivet, which reduces at least 50% of the difficulty of riveting this contraption together. on to assembling. This is really difficult. We've got all the arms riveted on. Now it's on to our central carrier. Somehow, when I put this all together, I need to put it together in such a way that I don't lose the opportunity to actually rivet it. That's gonna be the biggest challenge of the whole thing. Right, got the lower carriage riveted onto the arms and onto the leaves. That was a very finicky ordeal. <laughs> How good is that? Oh, tell you what, you don't want that in your mouth. It's time for the final piece at the lathe. That is cool and horrifying.
I've run into a little bit of a hiccup. As you noticed earlier, I put a whole load of nuts on the threaded portion to protect it while we were forging that little heart shape. I was able to remove most of them, but this one here is now stuck. And I've been fiddling, trying to get it off for a while. I've put the blowtorch on it, hasn't worked. And I'm very concerned that somehow it's cross-threaded itself, and if I try really hard, I'm gonna break it, destroy the threads, and destroy about three quarters of a day's work so far. It works again. Now you know what I'm not gonna do? I'm actually not gonna test this. I think we will leave this to our imaginations. There's gonna be a lot of leverage. It's an M8 thread, and uh, yeah, I don't think my teeth want to be pushed out of my face, neither does my jaw want to be dislocated. But I tell you what, that was a really fun project. And so a big thank you to all of you that commented that we should make that. Please let us know down below. What other wild and horrifying devices would you like me to make? Because I'd love to know. I sincerely appreciate your time watching this video. I sincerely appreciate you supporting our sponsors, like Mecarina, who sponsored this episode. Check them out down below. And I sincerely appreciate you supporting our store at the Alex Steel Co., where we sell grinders and all sorts of metalworking equipment. I am very excited that very soon, I'm going to be back in Montana. So stay tuned for those videos. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.